Hey guys, Top Tier Gaming here, coming at you with a deck that has a name similar to PK Fire. It's sort of a play on PK Fire. Um, it's PK Hero. Um, I made this deck because Dark Law is pretty much like the main purpose of this deck, and Dark Law is pretty much like an out to the meta right now. Pretty much every deck suffers from Dark Law, and pretty much this deck is optimized to summon Dark Law as fast as possible and sort of deal with the meta. Um, it's a little different, so there's some cards in here that you might not be used to seeing, but they work really well on the deck, and I'll just explain everything when I get there, so start with the deck profile. Um, three, Shadow Mist. Uh, this is just the main, like, engine of the deck. He's here to turbo out Dark Law as fast as possible, pretty much. You run cards to special summon him from hand, from deck, and you just want to special summon him as fast as possible to make your Dark Law. And then you set up, like, a pseudo-invincible board, making your Dark Law really strong. And something your opponent should have a really hard time dealing with. And then for PKs, run the 3 Cloak, the 3 Boots, and the 3 Gloves. I run all 9. Um, the PK engine is really strong. The reason I don't play regular heroes, even though it can pretty much bring out Dark Law as fast as this deck, um, the PK engine acts as sort of like a backup engine and adds some resiliency to the deck. And makes your Dark Law a lot stronger than Heroes Dark Law. Um, boots can search things like uh, Fog Blade and Phantom Knight's Wings, which can make your Dark Claw pseudo invincible. Cloak can bu like bump him up 800, and that's actually really relevant against stuff like Dark Destroyer. If they made that first turn, you just make your Dark Claw 32, run it over. Um, it can be a huge problem dealing with a 3200 Dark Claw. And then Clo uh, Gloves, he makes like 3k Break Swords. He can pretty much dump either of these. And there's a consistency card in this deck that links these two engines together and makes it one cohesive engine. So it's not like I'm just running Waste of Summon, Shadow Mist, and PK. Like, there's a card that makes these engines work together. And it flows as one cohesive engine. Also, like, this is a backup engine. Like, these work from Grave. And Heroes, if they get rid of your Dark Law play, you don't really have anything to back it up. But uh, these, you know, make rank 3 spam from Graveyard. It's just really strong altogether. So, yes, that is why... There are PKs in the hero deck. Um, so next is three Marauding Captain. This is one of the cards I was talking about that's maybe suboptimal or like weird to see, but it works incredibly well in this deck. Uh, in heroes, you might see cards like Goblinburg, two Special Summon Shadow Mist. Um, this deck uses Marauding Captain because you know Special Summon Shadow Mist in the same way. But uh, it can also special these PKs to start your rank 3 spam. Um, a common play in this deck is pretty much make like 2 or 3 Leviers with a Dark Law. And this can help you get there depending on what the rest of your hand is. It just commits more level 3s to the board where you can make Levier spam. And maybe set up like double Levier, Engineer, Dark Law. And it's just overall a really strong card in this deck. And then one Kagemucha Knight. Um, there would be more of this if, like, it was just PKs trying to do this, but, um, you know, Kagebush and I can't special summon Shadow Mist from hand, and Marauding can. So, three Marauding, one Kagemush and I is, like, a good ratio. Um, but this card works better with, like, a lot of con the consistency cards, like Allure of Darkness. Um, so, yeah, that's why I still run them, and, like, if you open these two together with, like, a PK, you can just easily make a lot of rank threes. So, yeah. And the last monsters are three Terror Top and one Takatomborg. Um, the first draft ever I had made of this deck, I wasn't running this engine. I didn't really understand how my own deck worked yet. Um, the problem was I played PK Fire before this deck, and I always saw the Terror Top as sort of a, sort of just a Dante card. And it's really just a lot more than that. Like it's just a lot of rank three spam comes from this card. If you open this. You can, like, end a way to make Dark Claw. Usually you can end with Double Levy or Dark Claw, which is, like, the main purpose of this deck is to make that board with, like, some trap cards. Because if you make that board and your opponent doesn't out it that turn, they lose the game. Because the PK engine just would make so many pluses off Levy here. And it's just overall really strong. So, yeah, you gotta run the Terror Top. Uh, that's all the monsters. On to spells. We run three, mass change second. Pretty obvious because, you know, Dark Law spam. You're gonna run as many of this as possible because you want to make Dark Law and you run a lot of darks, so. And discarding is not too bad because you are running the PK engine, you want things engraved. And then one regular mass change. Um, 
you can kind of see this as more of like this card, Takatom board. You run the 3-1 ratio because drawing this isn't as good. You only have three targets in the form of Shadow Mist. But when you're searching off Shadow Mist, 80% of the time, the Mass Change is a better card to search for because you'll need the other cards in your hand and you just want to make an easy Dark Law. And Mass Change can just easily just add this, use it, make Dark Law. You don't have to worry about what you have to discard. Um, but yeah, it only has three targets. So drawing this kind of sucks, but you really need to run it because it's so important most of the time. And now on to the consistency card. I was talking about that links the PK engine and Shadow Mist together. Um, three, Transmodify. Uh, so pretty much this is the reason this deck works. Um, I switched from PK Fire. Like I was thinking of what deck I could possibly run over PK Fire when I was, uh, because Cherry Blossom was a really horrifying card when I was first thinking about it. Um, and I just want to run something that loses to it less. Uh, less. Um, so I was thinking, I just want to make Dark Law, and I like the PK engine, but I can't lose to like making Dante. So I was playing this build sort of like with Goblinburg, Summoner Monks. It was a really strange build. It was my first draft. And it ran stuff like E-Call for Goblinburg to get the Shadow Mist. And, you know, it was just sort of gimmicky and didn't really work well. But then, like, as I'm looking through cards of Special Shadow Mist, uh, Transmodify popped up. And I was like, wow, this is really convenient because Transmodify just so happens to be able to tribute any uh, PK to be able to summon Shadow Mist. Can also tribute Kagamucha Knight, um, which is why he really works with like the consistency of the deck. He's kind of like the 10th PK. Um, and yeah, it was just a really convenient way to special Shadow Mist and put a PK in Graveyard. Because if a PK is in Graveyard, you can banish it and then you can start your Levier looping because you have a banished monster. So Transmodify sort of does everything in the deck to allure obviously really strong because it's a combo deck um, you want like certain pieces in your hand to be able to make dark law double levy air um, but it's also really good because it starts levy or looping because you just need to banish something have a banished monster to do it and drawing shadow mist can really be terrible in this deck unless you have marauding captain but this is a way um, to like banish shadow mist in your hand and make levy air with the copious amount of ways to make levy air in this deck like you run a lot of level threes and ways to do it so you can just make Dark Law that way by specialing back the Shadow Mist. It makes a bad hand really good, so Allure's like mandatory in this deck. Double Twin Twister. Uh, I don't play three because first game going first, I don't want to see multiples of this card ever. It can just make you lose right there because you didn't draw the cards you need to see. Um, game two and three, I do side in the third like all the time, uh, but just want to main two because I want to see it, but I don't want to see like multiples of it. I just want to be able to consistently consistently make my play uh, first game so yeah that's the reason I run two next some consistency cards gold sark another like sub optimal card uh, like you probably haven't seen this in forever but you make levier in so many different ways in this deck you can just banish shadow mist with this and go off one rota pretty obvious there's a bunch of warriors and one foolish pretty obvious for the PKs um, that's all the spells on two traps Got the three fog blade. Um, obviously, really strong with the PK engine. You just want to play three of this because it can special your PKs, stop things like monarchs in their tracks, and just be a good like Fiendish chain card. And then my favorite uh, PK trap is wings. This card is sort of ridiculous when when you have a dark law and you just back it up with this. Um, it's one of the reasons I want to play dark law and PK in the same. Um, deck and why I decided to make something like PK Hero uh, is pretty much this card because if you have this against something like PK Fire um, and they like Raigeki you or just try to run your Dark Law over and you play this, your Dark Law becomes a permanent 29 that can't die that turn. Um, and a Dark Law at 29 uh, pretty much destroys everything in PK Fire. You run over Beatrice in defense mode, Dante, you run over Pilgrim in attack mode. Like most of their cards do not get over 2800. The only thing that can is... Um, like a 3k break sword um, so there's just like very little out PK fire has to a 29 Dante and it actually kills a lot of things like monarchs it can run over the trap card it can run over like attacking their monarchs and 29 is just a really good number for it to hit so yeah the only thing it like the 29 doesn't do is start dark destroyer and you pretty much have to cloak dark off for it to get over dark destroyer and then one warning um, it's the only real trap I play because I don't want to draw traps. For the same reason I don't run like multiple or a three twin twister. 
Um, I just want to see my combos first turn, so I always have them. So I can pretty much like floodgate my way through to, like to victory. But like Dark Law plus this is really like blowout sometimes, and then it's just too good of a card not to run. So I do run the one warning. Um, that's the main deck on to extra deck. Two Dark Law, main card of the deck. It's just like the best floodgate ever. Just stops like everything. Uh, one Dion. Uh, you can use Marauding Catch with this in a really terrible hand, run something over, and then get like Shadow Mist, Mass Change, make Dark Claw. But it's also, I run the Dion because it's an out to Flying Sea. I don't know if anyone's going to be like playing that after like Cherry Blossom comes out, but it is an out to Flying Sea if they do side that in, you can just make Dion. So, yeah. Uh, one Dante. Um, here's like one of the reasons. Cherry Blossom doesn't hurt this deck as much as possible. Like, going first, if they're main decking it, and they see, like, I'm running PKs, they'll probably reveal their Dante, hit my Dante. Um, I do run one Dante because he's sort of like a toolbox in a terrible hand. You can sort of hit PKs or PK traps and get started. Um, but he's nowhere near, like, the main core of the deck. Like, he's just here to be that single Dante. So if they hit him, like, I don't really lose anything out of it. Um... The main uh, engine of the deck is actually the 3 Levier. This card is the strongest rank 3 in the deck by far. Um, I was playing 2 in my first draft, that is not enough. You need the 3 because it's your main play. You'll, you make like 2 first turn and then you need the 3rd one in case that board goes away. Um, it just spams your field with like a lot of pluses and it's just really strong. So you gotta play the 3. Then 2 Break Sword. Uh, kind of like the boss rank 3. He's like your backup in case your Dark Claw field dies. He pops problems. He can be really big. He can be like 3k. If you cloak him, he's 3-8. If he wings him, when he's cloaked, he's 4-3. Things get like ridiculous attack in this deck. And yeah, he just can make rank 4s as well. Like Key Beetle, Seas Rebellion, these are your rank 4s you run. Um, you know, when Breakstore dies, you bring out PKs that are level 4, so you make these. Um, yeah, you technically can make him with Shadow Mist too, but it really doesn't happen that often. Um, sort of like Toolbox Rank 3s are Engineer, Giga Brilliant, Grand Pulse. Um, Engineer is the one I go into most often to back up Dark Wall. Because, like I said, the whole point of this deck is to make a pseudo invincible Dark Wall. And uh, F Zero, because he can like clear your board space, so sometimes I just make him to make more plays. Um, and he's a good out to Cosmo, like, you can just win off this card. He's a good out to, like, a lot of things. He's just really strong. I thought about playing two, but I couldn't find the room. Like, there's always, like, cutting out Dion, but, I don't know, he, like, comes up sometimes, and I don't want to not have him. Um, the F-Zero's come up, like, once or twice, but less than the Dion has, so. Usually if I make the F-Zero, I win, like, relatively quickly, because I made him because I had multiple level eaters on the field. Um... So yeah, that's the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you did, leave a like, uh, subscribe. This was Top Tier Gaming by YouTube.